Hello, brothers and sisters in Hardwell's family. So there's a little situation that happened in the evening between me and a soul. I did something the Lord had asked me not to do. And when this soul was offended by my actions, I got frustrated and angry with them, although I was embarrassed that I got caught. I was brooding, but deep down knowing that what I did wasn't right, despite their reaction. I pulled the rhema that said, God's loving correction. Thank and sweetly kiss the hand of God that strikes you, because it is always the hand of a father who strikes you because he loves you. St. Father Pio. When I saw this soul again in the morning, we apologized to one another. I began to feel the weight of guilt in my heart, because I was in the wrong for sure this time. But a part of my pride wanted to hold on to anger. I was also feeling embarrassed by my actions the night before, and wanted to distance myself However, this soul was very kind, compassionate, and showed me much grace in their actions towards me. I was pleasantly surprised because, you know, when you have a conflict with someone, many times they can tend to act funny or distant when they see you again. Furthermore, going into prayer, I was also embarrassed to face the Lord because of my terrible fall. However, all the songs he played were about his great love for me and how nothing could separate us. Song after song, he lavished his love through the songs Holy Spirit played through my shuffled playlist. I was overwhelmed by the presence of God and overwhelmed by the love he showed me. And not songs of correction or disapproval. One song he played by Amanda Cook called There's Nothing had me in tears. And the lyrics go, What could separate us from your love? Is there anything? Anything? What could be more final than your blood? Is there anything, anything? There's nothing, nothing, nothing. There's nothing, nothing, nothing. There's no height, there's no depth, no power in hell, no scheme of man. There's nothing, nothing, nothing. What could be more powerful than grace? Is there anything, anything? What could keep you from the ones you died to save? Is there anything? That could shut a door you've opened, that could override your word that could claim to be a mountain you can't move, or there's nothing that could keep you from your children or change the way you feel about them. Build a wall that's strong enough you can't break through. Oh, there's nothing that could shut a door you've opened that could override your word, that could claim to be a mountain that you can't move. Oh, there's nothing to keep you from your children or change the way you feel about them. I was in tears now healed and strengthened by his love. Then my Lord's Supper reading sealed it all for me. The first reading was Hosea 6, verses 1-6. through six. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will restore us, that we may live in his presence. Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge him. As surely as sun rises, he will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. What can I do with you, Ephraim? What can I do with you, Judah? Your love is like the morning mist, like the early dew that disappears. Therefore I cut you in pieces with my prophets. I killed you with the words of my mouth. Then my judgments go forth like the sun, for I desire mercy, not sacrifice an acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. I knew the Lord is chiding me. Since we're doing this fast, I remember Jesus gave me Isaiah 58 about the fast that he desires, and that it was important that I didn't get angry or cause strife. And I was now guilty of that. It hit me that my fast wasn't pleasing to the Lord if I wasn't showing mercy as well. How can I fast yet still hold on to anger in my heart? The Lord desires mercy instead of my fast offering, instead of my sacrifice of food. I saw repented humbly again at the Lord's mercy towards me. I came before him and immediately I could hear Papa God speaking. God the Father began. My heart is always mercy towards you, my child, always mercy and love. Your life will testify of that. You're called to teach and preach about that, so you must experience my mercy firsthand, taste the sweetness of it and the goodness of my hand. Papa, I did this morning. Thank you so much for your continuous trust and belief in me when I fall and mess up. 
This was pretty bad. Thank you for using that soul to show me your love. This soul will continue to do so, beloved. Your answered prayer stands right before you. My mercy will continue to reign in your life and that of others. Meaning you'll be given ample opportunities to show mercy yourself as well. Be prepared for this, beloved little one. I am a God of justice and mercy. My beloved dear ones, as you press into prayer and fast before me, offering every sacrifice for your prayer intentions for your nation, nothing escapes me, and I appreciate every little sacrifice. But what I adore the most is acts of mercy. As it is written, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. All of you will be tested in this area one way or another during this 21-day fast. When I said I desire mercy and sacrifice, it's because many of the religious leaders in that time were full of self-righteousness and not full of mercy and love. They did many pious acts, extraneous fast offerings and sacrifices, but was a born smell to my nostrils. The fast that pleases me the most is a fast on self-denial, self-love, selfishness, which they were reeking within. My little ones, I desire to purify each and every single one of you to become instruments of my love and mercy. Expect circumstances to present themselves of injustice, partial treatment, unkind words, offensive actions, rejection, frustration, and interruptions set up to see how you will respond. Will you demand an apology? Demand things to be rectified according to your desire? Demand justice even, or will you show mercy? Remember the mercy that you have been shown by me. How I have loved you through your weaknesses, vices, sin, and all your mess. I don't see your flaws, my beloved little one. I see your efforts and goodwill, and that greatly pleases me. I see all that I went through to have you next to me, to have you in communion with me and dwelling in my heart. And it means the world to me, my dear little ones. There's a space in my heart where so many souls have been lost by the lust and love of the world and deception of Satan. Do you know that nothing can separate my love for you? I mean, absolutely nothing. Romans 8, verse 35 through 39 came to my mind. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or endangered or threatened with death? As the scripture says, for your sake we are killed every day, we are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victories are through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons. Neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. I even love the souls who have chosen hell rather than the glorious abode of heaven. I send no soul there, they choose, and my justice is sentenced. But even then, my mercy is still at play. All the souls only knew the vastness of my goodness and mercy. No one would run or even choose that place. My children would run to me every time they fall, rather than buckle in shame and condemnation. You see, my little ones, even when you're guilty, my mercy is extended to you. I know your guilt, and all you have to do is confess your error and come to me. Turn into my merciful arms that awaits to hold you, love you and strengthen you to pick you up again after a fall, and encourage you that I believe in you. I love you and I trust you. With more grace, you will conquer your struggles and weaknesses. With more trust in me, fear will leave you once and for all, and you will know you have a Father in heaven who loves you dearly. Yet is so close, ever so close to hear the cries of your heart and come to your aid in your affliction and need. I am God, Father and friend. There is no other, my little ones. Come to me. The more you taste of my mercy, the more merciful you become. How quickly some of you can forget my great love and mercy towards you in the moments of pain and offense. You rather lean towards resentment, anger, and bitterness rather than showing the soul grace and mercy, making excuses for one another and loving, bearing patiently with the faults of another, 
as I bear patient with your faults daily. Remember, my little one, the measure of mercy you showed towards another is the same measure of mercy that will be shown towards you. Do not hold anything in your heart towards another who offends you. Rather, opt always to think the best, and even reason in your heart that they had good intentions, despite their bad actions. Look to me for aid, and forgive quickly, just as you have been forgiven. And that was the end of Jesus' message. Thank you, family, so much for your support, your prayers, and donations. God bless you until the next message.